Hello, welcome to your meditation practice as part of the Open Heart Project. My name is Susan Piver. I'm very happy we can sit together. We're gonna to sit together today for 10 minutes and we're gonna start very soon. So please get settled, whether you're on a cushion on the floor with your legs crossed loosely in front of you or in the equally spiritual chair. And if you sit in a chair, please sit with your feet flat on the floor. And as we get started, I wanna continue our discussion on what is called the Noble Eightfold Path. As you may have heard in Buddhism, there's something called the Four Noble Truths. They're not particularly Buddhist, they're more particularly truths. Uh, the first one being uh, life is unsatisfying. Sorry to break that to you. Doesn't mean there aren't moments of great joy and great satisfaction, but generally speaking, or completely speaking, everything changes and that's unsettling. And that's what is meant by unsatisfactory. Uh, the second noble truth is called the cause of suffering, which is trying to make things permanent, basically, AKA grasping. We all do it. I did it like 10 times today. So, you know, we're humans. Uh, the third noble truth is called the cessation of suffering, which says you can stop. Basically, now that you know what makes it happen, just stop doing that and you can be liberated from suffering. Of course, it's much more uh, nuanced than that. How do you do that? How do you stop doing that? Well, we come to the fourth noble truth, which is called the Eightfold Path. So yet another list. And the fourth noble truth says, this is how you do it. Do these eight things. Just do these eight things. In the last weeks, we've talked about the first six. Right view, right intention, right speech, my favorite right action, right livelihood, and right effort. And today we come to the seventh, which is called right mindfulness, which is a little bit different than being a good meditation practitioner. Like I've got mindfulness right. It doesn't mean it in that sense. Uh, right mindfulness means you have a sense of great spaciousness in the way that your mind works and the context that you sense it inhabits. That was very poorly explained. Uh, often, I, I think when people say, I wanna be more mindful, they mean they wanna be more focused. They wanna be able to concentrate better, which is mwah, me too, that's fantastic. And mindfulness could certainly be interpreted that way. You are able to place your mind on the object of your choosing, at work or a conversation or going to sleep or petting your cat or whatever it might be, and you are able to hold your mind in that place, an increasingly rare and valuable skill. So that's a great definition. However, right mindfulness as the seventh step on the Noble Eightfold Path doesn't exclude that, but it includes something a little more Spacious, just to use that word again. Sometimes when I hear people say, I want to be more present. I want to be more awake. Yay, I, I applaud you completely. But there's this sense that once I learned how to be present, I would be able to stick and stay. I would be able to nail that down. And of course, then you, whoop, you have departed the realm of right mindfulness because you are trying to stick in one particular spot. And right mindfulness means you abandon that effort, which seems terrifying, I guess, and uh, semi-impossible, uh, because usually we are trying to uh, manipulate our mind to be resting or enjoying or clinging to the things that we like. I don't blame you. Similarly, we are trying to rest our mind, W-R-E-S-T, from the things that we think are unpleasant. I don't want that to be true. I don't want to think about that. I don't want to be, I don't want to pay attention to that. I hate that. Cool. Humans, this is how we are. So we're normally trying to, to you know, hold on to the things that make us feel good and 
a separate ourselves from the things that make us feel bad by all the various means at our disposal. And right mindfulness means you stop doing that, basically. Can you imagine? You stop doing that. It doesn't mean that joyful things don't give you joy. In fact, they could give you more joy because you are resting into them a little more fully. It doesn't mean that sorrowful, hateful things don't cause you pain. They do, and that actually may be increased as well because you are allowing yourself to rest in that quite, quite. I think it's the technical term is no fun whatsoever. Um, but your mind develops a kind of flexibility and fluidity so that you are not just directing it uh, according to your will, although you can do that too, you're taking in what you feel inside, what is happening around you, the people who are there, the things that are going on. And the th a third element, uh, to me the most fascinating, you're also taking in the environment, the space that you are in, because the environment itself seems to have its own juju its own life its own feeling you can you and i could sit down in in a room and have a conversation and you and i could sit down in a different room and have the same exact conversation but it would feel different because the room was different so mindfulness right mindfulness means all of that i'm aware of myself i'm aware of you i'm aware of the space and in addition I'm riding it because all three of those things are always changing. So right mindfulness means I'm going with it. I'm with it. How is that possible? Well, meditation practice totally teaches us how to do that. And we're fixing to do that in a moment. But it's also a consequence of six other actions. If you have right view, you see things clearly, quite courageous and deep. If you then have the right intention, which naturally stems from the right view, I want to be a benefit. Seems that that's how we're wired, no matter how many exceptions we can come up with as illustrations. Right speech, I'm committed to employing this weird superpower for good. Doesn't mean I don't get angry and say, harsh things that can be very compassionate uh, it's not always not being a sweet nice babysitter all the time uh, right action you know i'm a moral ethical person uh, right livelihood i try to bring some goodness to the way i spend most of my time during the most days and right effort i don't give up when you do all those things Right mindfulness is like the blossom. It just flowers open. Um, and I, I humbly request that you not take my word for this or any darn thing for that matter. You must explore it yourself. You must marry everything you learn. Big statement here with your own intelligence. Otherwise it is empty. So your mind is the powerful teacher that we need to uh, rely on, that we can rely on, that you may rely on. So next week, we'll come to the eighth, right, Samadhi, it's called. We'll talk about that next week. And in the meantime, let's practice together. Begin your practice, please, by just forgetting about everything I just said or, and everything you just thought about it. It's not necessary right now. And sit up straight. Feel the strength of your back body and the softness of your front body. Let your belly relax, the area around your heart, your throat. 
The hands rest on the legs, palms down, and they're just resting. We're not trying to get them to work. Just try allowing them to just be at peace. Don't have to perform for us. And let the shoulders relax. The chin is tucked a little bit, so the back of the neck is long. The mouth is closed because you don't have to talk. That's my favorite part. I love not having to talk. Please enjoy. Nothing is asked of you right now, nothing. The breath is natural in and out through the nose. No breathing technique, in other words, just regular breathing. The eyes are open. The gaze is cast down to a spot in front, up to six feet, two meters or less, given the distance of your screen. And the eyes are relaxed and receptive. The crown of the head reaches up a little bit. All the sit bones reach down. So up and down and strong and soft. This is who we are. Now feel your body breathing. Just feel the breath. Feel the inhale and the exhale. Feeling the breath is a little different than noticing the breath because we're not stepping away and looking back at ourselves. There's more quality of being with. Feeling. The expansion of the in-breath and the dissolve on the out-breath. The mind continues to think thoughts, which is fine, that's what it does. Like the eyes see or the ears hear, the mind thinks. No big deal. Most of your thoughts will come and go on their own. They won't really distract you. However, if you notice that you have become distracted by thought to the point where you're no longer aware of your breath, here's the instruction. Notice that. Just see, that's what's happening. Label it, thinking, silently, to yourself. Let go. Just let go. That part can feel really good. Gently come back to your breath, which will still be there, and begin again. Feeling this in breath, this out breath, and again. So we'll sit together.
Thank you so much for your practice. I really mean that. It's a big deal. Thank you for practicing with me. And thank you so much for practicing together as a Sangha, as a community of almost 20,000 people all over the world. I'm so grateful we're on this journey together. And I'll see you next week. <laughs>